Oh, baby, I'm telling you, that was... I made it on time, fellas, okay? I... I made it on time. <laughs> well, about 30 seconds late, but don't tell her, because, uh... She didn't notice, man. But she was there, she was there, and... I know it was, because... Believe it or not, I when I put my hand on the side of her face, I could feel the heat. It was just incredible. And I'm going to tell you, fellas, okay, from what I learned from this, and if, if you take a look at the you know the recent videos, you'll see it's a brand new me, okay? It's I'm not the man I was before. And I made you a promise that I can help you save your marriage, okay? And what I want to do in this video is just to teach you how to go to heaven, guys. It, it don't matter if you're a truck driver, you know, uh, and you're married. Now, this is for married people, okay? Or, you know, if you've got a sweetheart and she wants to learn these commandments and the laws and such, okay? I... It'll also work for yous out there in, in churchianity, okay? I will... I speak it. It'll work. It will be done for y'all. That That's probably the only time you'll ever hear me, you know, go ahead and, and command you to enjoy it, okay? And I command you all. Okay? If you're in the military, you know, and, and you're out in the foxhole, man, just make arrangements with your wife or your sweetheart if she'll, you know, she's submissive to these laws and the commandments that, that she has this new love, this dead guy that my bride just, man, she, you know, she was looking, <laughs> yeah, she was looking at his feet again, man, I know she was, but what a prayer, man. See, the thing is, you got to schedule the time, guys. I just discovered this. I didn't know this before. I never was in love, okay? And this woman, she broke me down and made me new. And I look forward to things y'all may think is sappy. But if you're a truck driver and such out there on the road, I'm telling you, take those. If your wife is giving you some nude photos and stuff, buddy, burn them. You rid them off your phone. Don't you look at those nude photos. No, sir. What you do instead is you go ahead and you schedule the time. I know that you got certain times you got to pull over on the side of the road and you're supposed to sleep. Or you might have to clock in for, you know, a 15-minute break or something while you schedule it with your wife. Schedule it wherever you are in the world, okay? You call her up and say, dear, you know, and, and if she's not going to go to bed, and that's how I do this with my bride, okay, it's when she's going to go to bed, and tonight I discovered it, man, it was tremendous, I was on time almost, but I was in there at time, and, and I started praying, man, and this is what you got to do, okay, wherever you are, call her on the phone, if she's Set a time in advance that's convenient for your bride. And if you're on a government job or whatever, you tell them, hey, look, man, I'm going to tell you what, this is the new terms. Such and such a time. I need five minutes, man. I don't I don't give a damn what you got planned. I don't, I don't care if I'm the guy that's holding up the main beam so the structure don't collapse. You ain't got someone here to take over. Damn thing's falling in because... At this time, I have to be alone, man, and uh, you just pray, man. And if it's just convenient that she's going to bed, which is, you know, what I find works the best, because I, I mean, I, I prayed with her, and it was wonderful, but man, this was... I'm telling you, it's better than sex. <laughs> it's a it's a spiritual high that you can get addicted to. I'm telling you what, it's just... I mean, they, they wrote songs about it, you know. Stars bursting in light. <laughs> you know, but they, they put the wrong thing with it, you know. The lust. But if you could just go ahead and schedule a little time, man, with that bride of yours. 
same time, call her up. If you're in Tokyo, man, and she's in California, you know, get on the phone and say, hey, dear, I got a minute. What are you doing? Okay, okay, for five minutes, we'll just go ahead. You pray where you are. I'll pray where I am. I agree with you because I love you and I trust you, you know, and, and I know you love me and trust me, but I need some confidence, you know, so pray for that, will you, for me? And, and she could tell you what she might need prayer for. And then you hang up the phone, man. And in your little closet, you just concentrate on her. She's your holy temple, okay? I mean, the disciples was looking at the holy temple there that was made of these blocks and stuff, man, and said, man, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Look at that, Yahshua. Yahshua said, that's nothing, man. You, you ought to see El Yunai's bride. <laughs> All oh, these blocks are coming down, fellas, you know. There ain't going to be nothing left to it. <laughs> but you should see Elianai's bride. You know, talk about a, a work of art. Special in every way. I mean, Willy Wonka's got nothing on this scale, you know. I mean, she is my chocolate and my vanilla and my strawberries and everything, man. I mean, I just lust this woman. And it's just not for us to be together so I can show you men. I, I hope you men get your marriages straight so I can stop doing this. And then my bride might have the end of her work done, you know, and end up with me, you know. And, and who knows, but I'm telling you. And I didn't realize, I, I did make a video just before, you seen that if you watched the last video, I got up, I ran out, I had to go run, man, you know, because my bride was waiting at that time. And I didn't, I didn't think I was going to do it at first, I was just going to, I went and I just laid down and, and I just thought, you know, how great it would be. If she was there, you know, laying her head on my chest. And then I kind of moved over a little. Said, hey, I'll give you a little more room, babe, you know, to <laughs> lay on down here with me, you know. And it's like I could feel it. And I could feel her face. Oh, and I put my arm down and I, I hugged her shoulders, man. I said, oh, baby. Well, I got you. Why don't we pray? And that's when I discovered, man, you can go to heaven together thousands of miles away, man. It's beautiful. Get rid of the porn you got, man. Get rid of it. Worship your temple. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a beautiful place to be. And if you don't, Someone else is going to come along, man, because that's what, that's what takes place, you know. You can separate yourselves for a time, but you must come back together, join together. So, you want a brand new, man, you know. Get rid of those. Let your imagination go. By the time you get home, she may have been a dog in your mind. <laughs> and she's just a holy malik when you walk in the door. And you have a pleasant thing to say to her, you know, and she has something special. A kiss. And a welcome home. Hey, give him a kiss for me, lady, because I love him too. You And you too, give her a kiss for me now. You owe me at least that. If you got some feeling going on, then, then you owe me just that. But I wanted to tell y'all, you know, uh, my bride, she's going to be healed completely here shortly, you know, as soon as, uh, <laughs> like I say, her sauerkraut comes in and we figure out the time length and, and go from there. And we also want to see about, you know, and she's doing the other stuff, the garlic and everything, which is great. Uh, the Allison is pulling toxins out of her, and she's doing alkaline water. It's marvelous. This woman is just so fabulous. And, I mean, she knew a lot of these things before, but she didn't have the drive, see, because 
while she was caring for herself. She was caring more for the Messiah than she was herself. And she neglected some things, and and now she knows the importance, just like I did. Okay, I had to learn these things too, so that we could be part of this bride. Uh, <laughs> you know, and she started doing things she remembered. I said, "Oh, I remember that it used to do great." And I just, well, you know, she gave up on everything <laughs> except our King. You know, and and her heart was to him. <laughs> And I did the same, you know. I, I gave up on all women. And I set my heart on pleasing our king. And I just, I buckled down. And, you know, up until a couple of weeks ago, I was a fraud, guys. I was a fraud. I was a hypocrite. I was a liar, man. A, an empty speaker. I was the dead speaking and hoping someone would come alive. I was the one that was on the end of the shovel, man, you know. And the Messiah is saying, let the dead bury the dead. I was out there digging the graves for people, you know, because... I mean, I spoke the truth. I spoke the truth, but I was empty, man. It was I was a broken vessel by the you know the well side. I was nothing. I was a worm and <laughs> infested with worms. I was the king of nothing. I was everything that was bad and vile, and and I never had love, you know. And then all of a sudden, this gift. <laughs> And I tried to get rid of her, man. I, I didn't believe at first. She even told me. <laughs> she told me, no, I'm your gift. Our king has given me to you to be your... No. <laughs> it can't be. It can't be. You know, I, I couldn't accept it. She was just so, so beautiful, you know. I mean, tremendous and... and and I visualized her, you know, she's talking to me, and she loves me, so she's got these warts, you know, on her nose with the hairs coming out, and, you know, a lazy eye, you know, on top of it, she was so beautiful in my imaginations. I said, man, she's going to be just right, she's going to love me, man, you know, this is, this is great, and she speaks these words so beautifully, Yeshua, I, I can't wait, you know, this is beautiful, and, and then she sent me her picture, and it, she was, oh, scary, beautiful. I mean, scared me. I was terrified. I really was. I, all my life, man, you know, growing up as a, as a little boy, she, you know, these girls would come up, and they'd black and blue my shins, and I'm talking they were the pretty girls in the school, the short ones that was just knockout gorgeous, kicking me in my shins, man, and slapping me in the face, and, and I brought up I can't hit a girl, you know, if I do, uh-oh, all my brothers would whoop my butt, dad would whoop my butt after my mom whooped my butt. You know, we just didn't touch girls, and they kicked the hell out of me. I ain't known until I, I had been married and everything. I had this complex. It was even worse, you know, and blessed their souls for having big bodies. But them, you know, the, the Lucy's and stuff, you know, and uh, the heavier girls that may not be so attractive. Well, they was doing the attractive thing to my legs, too. And when they kicked, boy, I'm telling you, it wasn't fun hurt you know I've, I always had <laughs> my shins up and down man right to my kneecaps always and I kind of quit crying because I lost the pain <laughs> I couldn't feel things I was going numb man and and I was scared of pretty girls especially wow so I I visualized the perfect woman you know and, and one I knew I could trust and one I could respect and you know hug and hold and I was gonna kiss those wart hairs man you know that lazy eye you know I could you know she was gonna be my bride I could go ahead and fix it you know and that just meant you know many men before wasn't quite looking at her the right way and that was fine with me you know but 
wow, she sent her picture, and I wanted to jump underneath the desk and hide, man. I wanted to scream and run. Ah, no, this can't be. She was the most beautiful woman I ever seen. I mean, I watch Ghost. I hunger for your touch. <sighs> I mean, I was by the potter's wheel there, you know, with this woman with the wart. I saw her photograph, man. I had nothing but all this clay all over me because I fell into it. I couldn't believe it. How could a woman this beautiful even look at me, <laughs> you know, let alone write such beautiful words? And believe you me, I, I may have thought something before she, I don't know. She said she was a gift, so she had to have some kind of a king drawing her to me, not looking for anybody. I wasn't. I wasn't looking for no one. And she wasn't. She, She's fed up with the men of this world. She, she said, you know, my king, if there is one, you send them. But if not, you know, I'm yours and do with me what you will. Just let me bring some joy to people's hearts here, you know. And and I, I better do as my queen had requested. I'm sorry, everybody, but I'm going to pronounce a blessing on your marriages. And I can do this because I've got this long-distance marriage. I mean, I'm just as one as I am with my bride, and my bride is with me because we spiritually consummated. And, and tonight we went to heaven again. Two times, man. I know she went there. She ain't got to tell me. I felt it. I commanded her pain to go away. And before I got to the command in the video, she was healed. This woman told me I better start praying at the beginning of these videos. And you've got the introduction. Now I'm going to pray to heal your marriage. And this is for anyone that will put their trust in the commandments. And, and just start. Start, man. Start with the love of your holy temple. And then go on to not stealing, okay? And, and from there, don't commit adultery or something. You can do it. I'm going to pray for you, okay? Let, let's do this, okay? And hey, fellas, I'm sorry. But if you'd like to go to heaven with me, man, you know, why don't you do as my bride does and, you know, get ready. I'm going to take a sip of coffee, okay? And I'll tell you one, and you can go ahead and click me off, man. And you say your prayer first, but don't be calling on gods and lords, man, because I can't agree with that. All right? Use Father for our Creator. And you can say brother or king, but I recommend you say king. See, I've been a brother to the king, which gives me certain leeway in my prayers. You better start showing some respect toward him, though, because, I mean, he loves me enough that I've been killed enough, and he brought me back enough, you know. Yeah, I've died before, but this is about you and your marriage. It ain't about me. I've got the best marriage on the planet. I want to show you how to get it. And if you want, I mean, you do a quick prayer. Just say, you know, Father, through your, your son. And I don't even know who you are, but I want to. Will you allow El to pray for me? And will it, like, come on me? Can I have it? And that'll be fine, my friend. And then you could click me on and... I'll be praying for you, and you'll see, okay? That's what I hope I'm guided for. I got no script, okay? These are, it's a new me, man, you know, and I got purpose to pray. I know my king hears me now. I got evidence. I got a bride. She's so beautiful, man. The, 
And people in the library, should, it's a perfect place because people go in and they, they, even the old librarians, they look at with awe and, and they look different than what they are. And, and the beauty of my bride is so striking that they're afraid to look at her, you know, because they think their ticket's going to be punched out. But but they got this comfort from her, you know, because she smiles and she's professional, you know, and she wears those stern librarian glasses, you know. I'm, I'm trying to talk her into getting, you know, the things in the back, you know, where you can take them off and hang them if you're not wearing them, you know. That, that's just perfect and, and you know I'd be more excited about kissing her oh and I kissed her I sure did we were praying man okay alright so if you want you can click it off now and I'm going to start praying oh Father Yahweh you are so powerful and your hand reaches down to all of us you say my ear is too short that you cannot hear. And my hand? Too short that it cannot save? Nay, guys and gales. It's not that at all. It's your sins. Your transgressions of the laws and the commandments. That's what has separated me from hearing you, okay? And that's what our Father's saying. It's written. Isaiah spoke it. Folks, our King is here right now. He's the power of your marriage. He's the pillar of your hope. And He's all there is. And Yahshua, I'm praying for all those that desire a marriage to work. I'm, I'm praying for them. They're in agreement with what I'm saying and I pray that you'll hear these ones if they prayed before I started. Your, your ear is everywhere. <laughs> and the only thing separating you from hearing them is their sins. <laughs> so please, Yahshua, be merciful to these ones if they choose. If they choose to start walking in your ways and and putting one another ahead of each other. You know, the, the man praising his holy temple and his holy temple praising his holy temple. And may we set up these times with one another where we can spend, even if it's five minutes of a day, to pray at the same time that we may feel that oneness that we can only experience many miles away or even you know for those that live in their house and they're together all day while well, one go up to the bedroom if it's in the top of the house and one go in the basement and and set your time if it takes two minutes to get down there let your wife get ready in that bed you pray in separate places for five minutes or or 10 or 15 minutes just you praising your father with your mouth praising our king for the holy vessel and be thankful and pray for everyone pray for all of mankind pray that you be spared and that people hear your voice and and that your your loving spouse, hear your voice, your other half, while you pray and while they pray at the very same time. Well, it's an experience, gentlemen. I mean, if you can pray on the phone together, it's, uh, that's foreplay. <laughs> Yeshua, tell these people. I mean, you blessed me with this, brother, you know, and you want these people to know. This is spiritual love, people. There is no description for it. You're starting to feel it through my words. And I'm not even... I am your loved one, but I'm not that loved one. And you could do this with your aunts and uncles too, guys, you know. Call around and say, hey, look, people. At this time. 
Let's pray for something, you know, and know that you'll be heard because I'm commanding you to do it. I command this in the name of our King. Yahshua, you're my witness. I've commanded this. The only male who came above heard my voice. You said if I love Satan the devil, I was the son of Father Yahweh. And I didn't realize it until I was reading it. And I had to hold my composure, but it blew my mind when I quit the video. I was another man. <sighs> I didn't know who I was before, but you gave evidence to the whole world. And I praise you, and I thank you for doing that, because these people can believe that you sent me and that they should at least listen to what I have to say and it's it's a wonderful thing Yahshua you know I, I want no following I want I want the man to follow his damn wife and his damn wife to follow him <laughs> cleanse them cleanse them in your spirit cleanse them in your blood but I know you won't do that Yahshua until they come into this agreement and and they need to pray more we need these spiritual highs that we feel right now. It's tremendous. It's before your throne. It's otherworldly. And and we could bring each other there. It's, oh, Yeshua, thank you for this time. Thank you for this time. Thank you for healing those that choose to be healed. Because I command you, be healed in this love for your marriage you're not going to be healed in your body at this no this is specifically for that i'm not handing out you know the command for you to be healed in your body i'm not doing that because if you're not keeping the laws and the commandments then i told you you know this one thing you know you can have you can have your marriage healed all you got to do is agree with me right now before our king say it with me. I'm in agreement, Joshua. I'm going to do the best I can to keep your laws and your commandments. Alienize with me here and, and the two of us are before your throne and he wants me to know you. And Alienize said that you will introduce yourself if they're open. And it's true. Tell him it's true. Tell your king that what I said is true. He sent me. Tell him. All right. So thank you, our Father, for creating such wonderful creatures as those wives that were standing in agreement with this. And thank you for those wonderful creatures that you created as men. They ain't come up crawling out of no goddamn ocean with gills and shit, you know. Waiting for a million years for a mutation to come around for a penis to pop out and the other one, for some reason, pop a vagina and not take another million years to figure out what to do with them, you know. It's retarded. You know, may we be cleansed of these idiotic fables of men and put our minds to your commandments, your Ten Commandments, the 613 laws that only define how your Ten Commandments must be kept and to trust in you, Yahshua. And if they do this, their marriage will not only be healed, but they'll be guaranteed salvation. Tell them, our King. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it. But you, our King, if they invite you in their life, you tell them and you show them. Tell them, Big L, you know. <laughs> Big L sent you. They may, they may listen. And I pray they do, Yahshua. I know that I know that if they just do the prayer part, even in their Jesus and stuff, I know it'll heal their weddings. It, and they can renew their vows to one another before you. I mean, if they were joined together by man, I mean, that was sinful enough. They rejected you. You're the one that's supposed to join them, not a man. <laughs> They're supposed to have a wedding supper and, and everyone come and, and know, oh wow, there's the, the husband and bride-to-be. 
You know, when the sun goes down, we know what they're going to do. They're going to become at one. And may they know that for their wedding night, may they be clean and not menstruous. <laughs> you know, have the love for a man. Don't don't be marrying menstruously. And marry, marry in the purest you can be. And, and men, love your wives. Yahshua, thank you. We ask these things in our Father's name. And we ask Yahshua that you will take these prayers to our Father. And we thank you for bringing them about for us. And we love you. And we want to walk in your ways. And just keep showing us how. Day by day. Prayer by prayer. Show us how. And please, allow us that time. Let us find out a time that we can do it. At least once a day twice preferably or even more that we can just take five minutes out and charge our batteries and you help them Yahshua help them all you've helped us and I thank you praise Yahweh oh thank you everybody that was I felt you man I mean that was so beautiful it really was it was like out freaking standing I mean, I'm, I'm, woo! <laughs> oh, man, you guys have just, this is what it's about. This is where our strength comes from in these last days. The beast is rising up. And I ain't saying have sex with your neighbor. I'm saying have sex with your bride. No, I'm not saying have sex with her. To hell with sex. And don't do that effort thing ever again. Get rid of all those nasty ass pictures. Someone gets into your phone and they look at it, man. You promoted prom porn of your wife. You promoted people to look at your wife in a way she should never be looked at by anyone except for you, you dumbass. Get rid of it. What the hell's wrong with you? Crazy man. And you lady, if he's, if he's showing you some bananas in a picture, playing Tarzan or something else out there, get rid of that shit. Delete. If you won't delete, burn your phone. Get another one. Just keep the number, you know. Just pictures of them. Whip it up. You look at him in the prayers, and you'll see him in a whole new light, and you'll you'll be wanting to be with him. I believe you mean my desire for my bride. I mean, I've known her my whole life. She's been prepared for, you know, most the same amount of years that I've been. And she's been showing mercy, man. I wasn't, you know, but you can be shown mercy. I was, I took you know, these stripes on my back for you. And people think, you know, that, well, you know, the Messiah took, well, yes, the Messiah did. He took stripes for you. And he shed his blood for you. I can't do that. But he said, I will also take stripes for you. It don't have to be with a physical whip, my friends, you know. These stripes, you know, they come in many different sizes and colors. They've got flavors. You can taste the shit when it hits you, I'm telling you. And it's horrible. And you don't have to go through it. I told you all, you know, about the horrible marriage I had, but it was turned into this righteous knowledge of how to treat a woman. You compliment that woman when you set the times, man, you know? And be prompt. Don't let nothing delay you. You're on a mission. You're going to go before our king. And you're going to feel the power, man, and you're going to see. It says... Greater is he who is in you than he who is of this world. And you're going to feel it, man. I mean, did you feel it? When I took you to heaven there, 
when I taught you how to fly. Now you got to teach your wives how to do this. You got to teach them how to fly, man. You speak the words where you're at. You can do it low, but let them come out your mouth, man. Let the devil know what you're saying. Let the devil know you're praising that temple, and that temple's praising you, and with the two of you, hey, when two or more gathered in my name, man, Yahshua's there, the devil can't touch you. Yahshua will see you. And he's going to tell his Malachim, if he ain't never met you before, okay, because you was just a shit ass, some dumbass pimp, you know, maybe some dude in the hood, you know, that's talking all the jive or whatever, but he can hear an old, what they think, white guy in their language. You know, I mean, isn't that special? That just shows the Holy Spirit's working there, you know. And if you hear my voice, fella, tell them other fellas in the hood, say, hey, man, look, I ain't got no bitch no more, man. Don't you say the F word about her, you know. Don't you say, I ain't got no bitch no more. I got me a effing queen. That's not acceptable. But you tell them, fellas, you say, look, man, let's take the night off of hood. Except for, you know, if there's some fellas out here that ain't married. Now, you watch the streets, and if there's an old lady out there that needs help across you, you better damn well be over there, man. You take her by the hand, and you make sure you protect her with your life, buddy. Because you don't, us boys in the hood going to stomp your freaking ass. You better start showing a little care to these old people out here. You let them know that us boys in the hood is going to protect them. And why, fellas? Because you know our king's going to protect you. You know, the police and stuff out there, they're, they're no different than you. It's just everyone accepts that you're crooked and wicked, you know, I mean, and you are, you know it, but you're no more crooked and wicked than the cops <laughs> and the judges and such. They're all wicked and they're crooked, and I got the evidence of it, see, and Enoch's going to investigate. But do you have to wait till then to see? Can't you just listen, man? You could do better than the police. The police are building up forces, man, to take you all over. They want to control you. The beast wants you dead. They're going to come in for your guns and shit, man, you know, and, and your bitches ain't going to be there because you didn't love them. You didn't love them enough to stop calling them bitches. Yeah, I know. I was once in a... Oh, was it an ACLU uh, meeting? And uh, I was the only guy who looked kind of white, man. Standing up in front of, oh, 45, 50 black people. You know, that was the color of their skin. They had more pigmentation than I did, you know. But, you know, I told them I straight out, hey, man, you know, y'all looking at me kind of funny. But let me tell you, man. Y'all ever play, you know, y'all ever play cowboy and nigger? Because I'm telling you, man, they certainly play cowboy and Indian. And I, as far as I know, that's what I am. And I ain't never heard you go through this, so cut me a little slack. And I'm going to tell you, I have no respect for you people. I really don't. And the reason I don't is because you don't respect yourself. You call each other names, man. You call each other Negro and nigger and, and think that is some kind of social classy thing. Instead, you should be saying, and you do say, brother, but you have the wrong intent. A lot of y'all saying brother because you've been evil together and wicked together, but you don't have, I mean, if you started doing the right things, man, mix it a little bit, you know? It's all I'm asking, fellas. You know, you're you're in the hood. And you're out and you're robbing people, okay? But don't rob the, the old. Protect them. See, when you say old man, do you know in Hebrew what it's talking about? It's talking about somebody with wisdom. And you boys in the hood, you start listening to these old people. When you cross the street with them, just ask or say, hey. 
Moms, tell me your story. Or even better yet, say, hey, moms, could we have a short prayer while we get across the street? You'd be surprised, man. She might say something blows your freaking mind right out. Boom! And opens up all kinds of avenues. And don't you forget, you could be uh, entertaining Malachim. Holy Malachim. You certainly could be. You might help her across the street and, and see that she had dropped her hat and you pick it up and go to give it to her and she ain't there, man. And, and you know that you helped her across the street. <laughs> And you look back at the hat and it's gone. <laughs> you know, I mean, those are signs, but sometimes they're not quite as visible. But you can make these blessings visible. Just do a little kindness, man. Fight the devil. Even if you're wicked and evil and, and you want to see what it feels like to do something right, you know, just tell your bros hey man look I'm gonna listen to this ugly white dude man I ain't white I think I might be Hebrew you know one of the tribes if I'm one of the 12,000 and if not uh, it shows that I've got you know American Indian descent Native American uh, my grandmother my grandfather had married and she was a, a Chippewa princess <laughs> She died at childbirth with my daddy. Yeah, she was uh, supposed to be really beautiful, man, and she was of a royal bloodline. And, and they say that, you know, the blacks, you know, in Africa, a lot, you know, is basically of the uh, lineage of Levi. You know, I mean different strokes for different folks man you know but it doesn't matter if you keep the laws and commandments you become one of the tribes you know these glasses are off a little bit I'm gonna have to figure out what to do nothing worse than looking at a guy with lopsided glasses trying to tell you truth you know it seems like I'm a little out of kilter but I'm telling you true things man I'm I'm telling you pay some attention to that woman and then when you feel satisfied, you woman, when you feel satisfied, pretend you don't have a mate. And that's what you should be as helpmates. But pretend for a while. Agree on separation for an hour or two, you know, before you come back together because you're going to come alive, okay? You're going to be reincarnated. And y'all trying to use Viagra and stuff, man, putting all your holy temple through all that stuff. If you just paid attention to your wife instead of wanting to jump in there, you know, and and do your stuff, and then all of a sudden you find out now you can last forever, you know, and and you just lay there wondering what to do. Well, kiss your foot, dumbass. Start there and figure things out, but you probably should do that before you did all that other stuff, maybe. I think that would be a wise idea. But then after, you can kiss her just about everywhere, you know? You know, after you do the wild willy stuff, man, make sure y'all, you know, get the sheets washed and stuff, and you take a shower, man. If you don't want a prostate problem, listen to me. After you have sex, urinate. I don't care if you go right back to it again. But after you do that, get up and go urinate. Wash yourself off, okay? Nothing like, you know, yeast infections. You don't want no yeast infections. Are you listening to me? I'm being as frank as I can, man. You ain't never heard. You know, I'm the minister of love. I'm here to heal your marriage. <laughs> I'm just a brother to our king, man. I'm his ambassador. And, and he told you, and... Matithia and, and, and Luke there. I'm the one that forgave Satan. And he said, hey, if you forgive your enemies and you pray for them, then you're a son of the Father. Which makes you, because, see, that's what the king said. He says, who's my mother? Who's my brother? My sister's a... Uh, Not the ones that was coming to visit him. 
He said, but those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven, those are my brothers and my sisters and my mothers. The will is the commandments. You feel the wildfire starting, buddy? Can you see the healing coming? You can look at that holy temple a whole new way, man. I mean, especially if you found out that she was farting around on you, you know, and you've known it for years. You can just tell her, say, hey, look, dear. I mean, put my videos up here. I'll tell her, hey, look. Lady, you're a whore. Okay, now your husband, he don't want to tell you this, but I'm telling you, you're a whore. And you got to stop being a whore, okay? Uh, hopefully, the fella next to you don't think you're a whore. Unless you believe me and you know it's true and you want to stop being a whore. See, because this guy here, he's already watched this and, and he heard me say that, you know, if you want to show your wife an asshole, Bring her on in here, man, and and see how she reacts. See, that's the safe valve there. See, it, it's it's uh, the safe clause. The drain plug in your block. Them little plug dealies that if they come out, you lose all your antifreeze. You need to put your trust in that woman to let you know <laughs> that she feels she's been wrong and she doesn't want to do it to you no more. She, she can hear my words. She already did that you're supposed to worship her, man, and her alone. And, and I'm telling you, all she got to do is just change your heart, man. Just, just like change your heart change her perceptions and and tell that old adulterer you've been around man just get lost forgive her you both get baptized man and you tell her what you've done confess these things to each other and and promise you'll never do it again don't you hold a grudge <laughs> no I mean if she only burnt the bacon you bought the shit. You're both guilty. You're both just as damn guilty. You bought bacon and you are not supposed to eat ham. Let alone bacon. And you bought it. And she burned it. Don't do it again. Throw it out. Cleanse them frying pans and such with fire if you can. And if not, scour them the best you can. Get rid of it. If you got plates that are like ceramic and they got cracks in them and you've eaten pork on them, well, don't throw them out. Don't give them to the no. Well, to someone who don't believe, man, if it's a blessing to them, it's okay. If an animal had died on its own, it's okay to give it to the strangers. And the strangers are not those that keep the commandments and laws, so it would be okay. It would be a blessing to give to someone that didn't have plates, someone that just moved in, someone down the road, uh... Someone that went through a, you know, a, a earthquake. I mean, if it comes into a hand of a believer, they'll look at it and they're going to say, well, this is a ceramic plate. Look, man, someone could probably use this better than I can. If you, like, got an old, uh, you know, water bottle, you know, the plastic water bottle, maybe I can make a cup out of it and I'll just use that for my plate. That'll be much better. This will help some child so their stuff don't fall on the floor. And people won't think that you're pressing them with what you know. They think it's a kindness for you rejecting the world, you know. And, and you can hide among them without them ever knowing you're there unless you just come right out and say, Hey, man, you got to start doing this. You ought to look at this, man. Hey, Annie, baby, guess what? I found Joshua, man. Oh, you wouldn't believe. You got to keep the law. You got to quit, you know. And, and Uncle Charlie, hey, man, you got to get your dick whacked, man, you know. 
Yep, bring out the straight razor. We'll get you circumcised. I heard you ain't circumcised. Well, you got to get circumcised now because I got some great news to tell you. And we got to do the weenie whack. You too, Uncle Charlie. You know, get on over here, man. Everyone's getting the weenie whack because I got some good news to tell you. Don't do that, fellas. Gales, you know. Keep it between you and your husband and your children. Let it be your secret. I learned. I can tell you how not to have the Messiah bring in a sword to divide you. He already did. He divided me. <laughs> I'm telling you how to avoid it. You love each other in secret. And others are going to ask, hey, what the hell are you two doing? You're glowing like a freaking flashlight in the midnight hour. The hell are you doing? You can say, well, you know, we just both fell in love with the same dead guy. It works. And you know what? I look different. I look back at my other videos, man, and it's like my facial everything is changing. It's maybe me. Maybe I'm looking at myself different. Maybe i never seen myself before. But I tell you what, if you if you go back to the, the videos, you know what? Before I announced that I was... You know, now I had a lovely bride. You go maybe a week or two before that. And you just look at a video then. And then follow the videos in order. All the way up to this one. And you'll see the transformation, man. It's almost like watching a live transformation. I was beat to hell, man. And yet still making videos. And you could see this big change from what I was before I got that ass whooping to where I gave up my faith and said, the hell with it, you took my bride, man. Oh, I got her picture up here, guys. I've been talking to her. This is all talking to her right now because I don't have no scriptures i got to read. I'm basically rehashing everything I told you. So you can fall in love, man. And you can get a spiritual virgin. I'm looking at my brides. She, she, she said, I'm telling you, get rid of those nude pictures. Don't even think twice about it. Get rid of them. Use this. You start using this, you're going to teach down there what you forgot to use with too. You got to start thinking, man. Think about that holy temple and, and you'll start thinking in more ways than one. And you'll amaze yourself. You start praying with one another certain times. I mean, my bride, man, she loves me and, and she isn't teasing me. You know, it's not what she's doing at all, but she showed me her, like, top of her shoulders here, you know, and, and she's got a strap or stuff, and, and then she's got a picture, you know, where it cuts off, but she's just got the bottom of her hair, and it's about, oh, maybe like this far down, and she said, you know, it's, it's a picture she had when she first woke up, and she said, I want you to see what you're getting in, Dale. <laughs> Here you go, Ellie and I, click, you know, and I looked at it and I couldn't believe it. I said, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't. I mean, I was so glad she sent me the first picture where, you know, she was so stark raving gorgeous, man. I mean, scary, scary, pretty, beautiful, illustrious, just scary, beautiful, the kind of gal I ran from. I did. But I was conditioning myself after I seen her. She didn't have no warts, man. Didn't have no evidence of having warts, you know. She's perfect. The most beautiful songs etched in her face. 
right by her eyes and her eyes are oh they're kingdoms of their own I mean she's so gorgeous man and I look at her and say wow you wore makeup and you look like that wow well, I'm sure glad you wear makeup out there so those people don't see what you look like. But I also kind of told her, you know, just, and I don't mind, I'm not telling you not to wear it, but boy, I sure prefer when we're alone. If you don't, you know, it's, it would please me, it would pleasure me, I can just look at you. I just want you, you know, I don't want what you can be or, or what you appear to be to everybody else. I want you and and I don't want them abortions on your face, you know, I don't, you know, it's like I don't want to kiss my, you know, nephew or something that I might not know about. Who knows who's got pregnant and had an abortion and it ends up in the in the cosmetics or your bread, you know, I don't, I don't want to kiss somebody else's nephew night night on your cheek. So just wash all them dead guys off, you know, and, and let's ask that you be cleansed and I want to kiss you on your face. Y'all getting the message? My bride did. I was a whole lot nicer about it with her, but she understood and she says, wow, I didn't think about it. But I wanted y'all to really think about it. You need some changes, man. Let's let's become pure. And you know what? If you start keeping these commandments, know that our king, I mean, there's only one thing you should doubt, and that's if you get the, you know, the gift of the Holy Spirit for healing, which is really nothing at all. I mean, you're not doing anything for it, man. The person being healed, you know, they got to have enough faith to come before you, but you know it doesn't matter about their faith either. Because their king's just going to use you to heal her, that's all. You're the damn screwdriver. You're nothing more than that. So, if you're ever going to doubt anything, there's only one thing I know of right now that doubt is beneficial. And I'm not saying to be a doubting Thomas, to have to prove everything, but just... Just doubt seriously that you could ever heal anyone. You doubt. Tell her king, say, hey, look, you know, I can't heal no one. I don't think I can. But you know what? I'm going to represent you. And uh, if somebody's needing healing, and I see they got that desire, you know, just, just give me the power to command their pain to be gone even if they're not healed just their pain to be gone so they can make the right decisions so they could think clearly so they could love better and man you'll be able to do that if you start keeping the commandments man you can command that woman's body our king said so, and you've seen it already. Well, you may not have seen it, but I'm telling you. My bride wrote me an email after I finished that email telling her to... I commanded her to be healed. And then I made another video after that. And I got it all spoke out, and I was going to send it to her. And I clicked on and I seen that she had wrote. And she she put there, pain gone. And the tears, you know, wasn't there at all because there was nothing to cry over. I knew she was healed, you know, of the pain. But that was it. I didn't know if it went further or not. But I did ask that it only go that far. My wife's obedient, you know, so... And I feel bad for her, but I feel so great for her because she she's proud of those scars, you know. And our king's merciful, so he's going to heal her, you know, and, and she's going to have her scars. 
so she can she can brag on them you know when she brags on them she's bragging on her king and you men are going to be able to do the same to those holy vessels there and you know I imagine that those holy vessels can also pronounce the same on you because your body man they got power over it <laughs> and you feel it when you go and pray together one room to another 10,000 miles apart whether you're in the foxholes in the desert and there's bullets flying all around you just say hey I don't give a shit y'all carry on man I got a date I'm out of commission five minutes you know this between me and the king and nothing's gonna occur to you because you got a loved one and you might win the battle <laughs> you might just do that man because you honor our king more than playing these goddamn shoot 'em up games for corporations you know to rob each other and and ultimately steal America well you're out there defending you know so-called defending they're robbing us blind over here that's why they hate me that's why they murdered me man that's why I can't tell you who my bride is and I ain't telling you you can pull out my freaking toenails and I'll thank you before you get a word out of me it's a secret thing it's before the courts of heaven and our king is watching over her. Satan's pissed because she ain't saying nothing to no one but she's going to have documentation, you know, and, and maybe, you know, one of these days, and she can show her family, you know, what's going on, and that, you know, she did marry the right proper guy. She'll be able to show everybody. The whole world will know at that time, because Enoch's going to bring, you know, an investigation, or people's going to start hearing my words and it'll be time and it may be weeks from now a month from now or whatever I don't know but it says that I'd be revived in the last days it also talked about on the third day I would be revived and so there's going to be a great awakening you're going to start seeing others coming out and preaching in this this thing but don't forget you heard it from me first and these others, if they're speaking out of line, I need to know about it. Or you others, you know, if you know about it, you tell them you better shut it up. Or you ain't one, you know. You speak the truth. Only. And if you don't know, I listen to what I'm telling you. And you'll see that this is the only doctrine, you know, that our Messiah taught. It's the only doctrine the disciples ever heard. I'm explaining to you what they were saying in their words back then that's translated to English today. It's in English, but I'm translating it into spirit. There's only spirit in these videos, man. And, and if you listen real close, real close, I mean, you ain't got to get up and stick your nasty ass near ear up against my mouth on the screen show a little dignity and just be thankful I'm here to listen as well as speak but I'm speaking softly and our king said God near to hear and a hand to save you man but your prayers are turned away from me I can't hear you because you got these sins you ain't repented of yet now you go out there and you play your little games and all the churches and everything but if you ever decide to get serious and start keeping the laws and commandments well then I would and if you understood if I let you understand and you prove yourself you know, I think I can wash you with the blood. Because I could trust you to, to wear that blood properly. When you see a beautiful woman out there that's not your bride, you, you look at her and she's like, 
her brains, brains, cause she wants your brains and your soul, she wants you to be like her, now with a babysitter man, if you want your children to be like her, you praise that woman, and your children will grow up praising her too. And if they don't, in secret, whoop their ass, man. You know, I mean, you can do it in different ways. They ain't praising their mama. Tell them you want to go for a hike, and when they ain't looking, knock their head in the tree. Let go of a tree branch. Rack. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Was you going to praise your mama? Because daddy loves you to death, man. You know, I'd sure like to hear you praise your mama here. You think you can go ahead and praise your mama when we get back to camp? See, there's plenty of ways you can convince, you know, people without, you know, really having to convince them of much. And it, and it makes them feel like they want to do it. Especially after the second or third branch hits them in the face, you know. They start coming to, th you know, Dad, I think it's a pretty great idea that I, I bless Mom, man. You know, I love her apple pies. And, think she'll bake me one if I bless her you know I mean that's how it operates guys sometimes you gotta you know do a little bit of trading there you know to get the feelings right you know if I bake you an apple pie will you wear your librarian glasses or bake me a pie I'll do whatever my queen desires you know what queen your wish is my command and I love you <laughs>